Hey guys, I should say hey yogis. Um, this is our live Tuesday talks about just some general stuff today about yoga, just a general introduction to it. Uh, me and Bob and Calista are actually on our way to take some trash to the dump. <laughs> you know, you gotta do what you gotta do when you can. In any case, um, a lot of you know yoga as a physical thing that we do at the gym or that we stream online or that we watch on YouTube. There's so much more to yoga than that. And I wanted to just generally touch on that. There are so many different types of yoga. <laughs> Calista wants to say hi and show you her ducky. Anyways, there are so many different types of yoga and so many different yogis that brought yoga here from India or wherever they come from. So I'm not going to get too much into the different styles of yoga. There's definitely a ton that you can look into. There are some that are even branded like Bikram yoga um, is a branded yoga. It's a hot yoga. It's very non-traditional, very almost competitive physical yoga and that to me is not true yoga. True yoga is a mind, body, and spirit practice because yoga means yoke or union and it's the union or the yoking of the mind, the body, and the spirit which is what yoga is. It's not just the physical poses on the mat. So traditionally speaking, the physical poses or the asanas, so they're called, is basically one-eighth of a whole. You have the eightfold path that includes the yamas and the niyamas. It includes pranayama and meditation and all these things basically that lead you to samadhi or liberation or nirvana, depending on you know what brand of yoga that you're going with. Everybody has a different name. So the asanas are just one piece of that path. They are one part that will help you get to that liberation or that nirvana. But it's supposed to be in conjunction with all these other steps. So the not the yamas and the niyamas are basically like the way you live your life. The things that you follow. For many people, everybody's pretty familiar with the Ten Commandments, so it's kind of like that, things that you should do, things that you shouldn't do, like non-harming or ahimsa. There's all kinds of stuff like that that goes into the actual, like, real thing of what yoga really is. And so that's what I try to incorporate in, you know, our yoga kula or our community, and I try to incorporate it into my classes. I try to do a little bit of, um, you know, talking about intention setting and recognizing and expressing gratitude for what you're doing on the mat. I talk a lot about breathing or pranayama as we call it and I incorporate some meditation. All of that along with the physical poses and the stretching and stuff that we do on the mat. I remind people to also, you know, always bring their mind back to the present moment. A lot of times when we sit in a pose, our mind tends to wander and think about our to-do list for after class or that person that pissed you off for the day or whatever. And part of our yoga practice is to, you know, let go of those things, even if it's just for the moment in this moment and be present where we are and just allow ourselves that moment of respite and of peace and of quiet. And the more we do that on the mat, the more we can do it off the mat and in our regular lives, which would help bring more peace and calmness to our lives. Um, so my style of yoga, it depends on where I'm teaching it as to what I call it. At the Y, they call it Hatha Yoga or traditionally it's Hatha Yoga, which really what I teach is not that. If you were to see that kind of yoga, you'd be like, what the heck? Like, this is really weird. And gyms, you know, call it different things. Uh, a lot of people would say that my physical practice is more of a vinyasa where we link the breath with a flowy type movement. If I were to tell you for our group what type of yoga I teach, I don't have a label for it. 
I just try to include all of the eight pieces of the eightfold yoga path in our practice and just, you know, practice, just do yoga. I try to share with you guys in this group articles, funny memes, photographs, motivational stuff that will help you on your yoga journey, whether that be a physical journey, a spiritual journey, or a more holistic all-around journey. Um, so I think that's all I have. For, oh, so I wanted to, um, to cover some misconceptions on yoga. So yoga, a lot of people, and I actually was reading, um, a Facebook post that a friend made about his experience with yoga. He went to hot yoga and he didn't have really a really great experience, but hot yoga is a, basically a non-branded version of the, the Bikram yoga, which is branded. And you basically do just like a certain set of poses on the mat in a really hot room with the humidity turned up. And it's all about seeing how deep you can get into the pose. The reason why it's so hot is the theory is, is that that helps your muscles loosen and so you can lengthen more into a pose and get deeper in a pose. And that is really not what yoga is about. Uh, you're supposed to honor your body and not push it into a pose that your body's not ready for. Um, anyways, he was calling yoga a religion. And for some people, maybe it is. But generally speaking, when you talk about going to yoga, like a public yoga class at a gym, it's not a religion. It's a physical, you know, a, a form of physical fitness or stretching. Um, also another misconception is that you need to be flexible to go to yoga. And I posted this in our group the other day and I'm going to keep telling people this until they understand that, you know, physical flexibility is not a prerequisite for yoga. It is, you know, what happens when you continually go to yoga and practice regularly, you will create flexibility in your body. And there's so much more than flexibility that you'll get from a regular yoga practice as well. Um, a lot of physical things, it can alleviate joint pain because any kind of physical activity will bring fluid to your joints and help relieve a lot of joint pain. And do you need something? Um, sorry. So, okay, so flexibility. A lot of times we don't even realize that some of our pain is not necessarily muscle pain or joint pain. It can be tendon or ligament pain, and yoga helps with that as well. Hmm, I don't, I just, I, I'm at a blank right now as to other, you know, benefits of yoga. There's so many, and you can Google benefits of yoga and find it out yourself. But just know that you don't have to be flexible to go to yoga, which you guys want to be here in my group if you thought that anyways. Um, another misconception is that yoga is just stretching. And I guess for some classes at gyms, it could be just stretching. But for our purposes, for the way I teach, yoga isn't just stretching. Um... It's a mind-body thing. It's stretching. It's breathing. It's moving your body. It's mindfulness. It's meditation. There's a lot to it, and it's really important to me that, that you guys get that full experience. And I think that's really all that I want to cover. I don't want to make this really long and bore you guys. I just wanted to do a quick general overview and intro for you guys and just get conversation started. So every Tuesday we can have these yoga talks and, you know, just talk about yoga and how we can use it in our life, not just physically, but in other ways. So if you have questions about this video or something that you feel like I didn't cover in this video, please feel free to comment anytime you watch this video because this will be staying in the group forever. 
Um, and if you have suggestions or comments or questions for future Tuesday Talks, uh, you can leave them in the comments below, or you can message them to me, or you can post them to the group, or whatever. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope you have a great Tuesday.